Okay, class, I'm going to do a very quick summary of the chapter that we covered in yesterday's class. Yesterday was uh, Wednesday, the 26th of September, and I'm going to do a quick review of confidence intervals, interval estimation, that is. And we will look at, first of all, the interval estimate uh, for a population mean, and then the interval estimate for a population proportion. Now, what are interval estimates? When we take samples from a population, we usually get a single uh, value, a single value that we actually call a point estimate. So in a random sample of, say, 10 or 20 individuals, if we're looking at the mean expenditure on, say, heating oil during the winter, uh, then that average that we get from the sample is just a point estimate. And we don't have a lot of reliability in that estimate because it's just a single value. More than likely, it would be wrong. And the difference between your point estimate and the population parameter is what we have been calling the sampling error. Now, we would rather have an interval for which we can associate a confidence level. That is, the likelihood that that interval contains the population parameter. So we call that a confidence interval or an interval estimate of the population parameter. So how do we actually compute an interval estimate? So if you look at uh, the diagram right here, you will see that this is our point estimate. And if we add to it uh, what we call a margin of error, which is a, a fixed amount, and we subtract from that point estimate a fixed amount, we get an interval. And notice that the interval um, is equidistant. The, the upper and lower limits are equidistant from the point estimate. So that interval will have a certain level of confidence associated with it. Now, we have the opportunity to actually set that level of confidence 90%, 95%, 100%, well, it can't be 100%, 98 99%, and so forth. It's never really possible to get 100% confidence. Um, in that case, you may as well include the entire, all the values in the population. It really doesn't make a whole lot of sense. All right, so that is the basic structure of a confidence interval. You can see here our population parameters, mu and pi, and um, x bar being the sample estimate for mu, and p being the sample estimate or point statistic for pi proportion. We will look at the generic form of a confidence interval. So if we look at this formula, we see that a confidence interval has three parts to it, but we could say two broad parts. The first part is called a point estimate, the second part is a margin of error, but that margin of error has two parts uh, associated with it. One part is the critical value, and the second part is the standard error. Now, if you go back to the empirical rule, you recall that when we were calculating the intervals for the empirical rule, we added and subtracted so many standard deviations. So one standard deviation was 68%. We, if we add and subtract two standard deviations, 95% and so on. Well, that two is essentially that critical value in this formula. And then, of course, the standard deviation is the same as the standard error. Remember, the reason why we're using the term standard error here is to denote the standard deviation of the sample statistics. So we are talking sampling distributions. With the population, we usually talk about the standard deviation. But when we're referring to a sampling distribution, we talk about the standard error. Okay, so that is our generic form, and you could take any kind of population parameter. If you want an interval estimate, you use precisely this form. So we're not you talking about proportion, mean, and later on we'll get into difference between means and difference between proportions. All of those, you could apply this particular formula to it. <coughs> Excuse me. So the um, critical value what drives that? Well, the critical value is determined by the level of confidence that we want. And that level of confidence, we usually express it as 1 minus alpha. The definition of 1 minus alpha, the confidence level, is essentially the probability or the likelihood that the confidence interval that you've computed will contain the mean. So if we say a 95% confidence interval, there's a 95% chance the mean might actually be in that interval. 5% chance now, which is the remainder, that it would not be in interval. And that's the significance level alpha. 
All right, so we call that um, the risk or the probability that the interval does not contain the mean. In calculating confidence intervals, we could deal with um, two groups when it comes to the population mean, or two cases. One is when we know sigma, and the other one when we don't know sigma. It's highly unlikely that we will actually know the population standard deviation, because if we know sigma, we should have all the values to calculate the population mean as well. So I would say, while there is a formula for it, chances are in real life we will not know that and we won't really need to use that formula. We have the second case where sigma is unknown and so that uh, is the case that would be more likely uh, to occur in, uh, in real life. Okay, And then of course we deal with population proportions. So let's get uh, to what the formula looks like. The formula for a uh, confidence interval of the, for the population mean if sigma is known, is the point estimate times the critical value, which basically is how many standard deviations we want to add and subtract from that point estimate. And then sigma over root n is the standard error, which is the same as the standard deviation of x bar of the sample mean. All right? So we would use this formula if sigma is known. But what if sigma is not known? We simply replace sigma by the best estimate that we have, which is S, the sample mean. Okay? Now, with that, that pretty much covers the formula for a confidence interval of the mean, for the mean, sorry, population mean. And I have the example that you can see in the video. I'm going to quickly skip to the um, concept of a margin of error. As I mentioned earlier, it has two parts. And you can see it has the critical value multiplied by the standard error. The usefulness of this is that sometimes we want to specify a particular margin of error. And the only thing that we have control over is the sample size. Because sigma, we have no control over that. And if we decide we want a preset level of confidence, such as 90 or 95%, the only thing left for us to control is n. And from that formula, what you will notice is that as n gets larger, the margin of error is smaller. In other words, the amount that you will add and subtract gets smaller, so therefore you will have a tighter confidence interval. Okay? Let's move to proportion. Now, I sort of skipped over the t distribution, which we'll talk about the case when sigma is unknown. But for now, we want an interval estimate for the population proportion. And so there is this characteristic in a population, the percentage of individuals who shop at Walmart, um, the percentage of students getting A in statistics. And then sometimes we don't know what that is, or most times we don't. So therefore, we want a confidence interval for it. And the confidence interval um, basically is made up of the same thing, the uh, point estimate, the critical value, and the standard error. So just this, this is just a reminder here of the standard error, which is sigma pi is pi the square root of pi into 1 minus pi over n. Now, of course, we could not use this in a confidence interval formula because it requires that we know pi, the same parameter we are trying to estimate. So obviously, this can't be for real. We would have to use this formula right here and use the sample proportion instead to get sp which would be our estimate of sigma pi. All right? Remember, sample statistics are always estimates of population parameters. And here's what the formula looks like. P plus or minus Z into the square root of P into 1 minus P over N. So here's our point estimate of sample statistic. Our critical value, how many standard deviations we want to be up and above, above and below the, mean, the, the estimate, sorry and then this piece, which is our standard error. So the margin of error for this formula is this part right here. And once again, we could control the size of the margin of error by controlling the sample size. And the larger we make it, the smaller the margin of error, and the tighter our estimate.